In today's video, we're going to finish building our website using Editor X. In the last video, we started off building our website and we got about halfway through. So let's go ahead and continue on with our website. That's today's video. Let's go ahead and get started. For the next section, we're actually going to use a repeater. So I'm just going to hit the plus icon and then go down to the layout tools and we're going to use a repeater. So a repeater is a layout that's made for identical containers. So here we're going to use this one. So I'm just going to click on this just to add it to our design. And with that section selected, I'm just going to click the three dots and move it down so that it is right above our footer. So here we have these three containers that are exactly the same and they're going to have the exact same information in them, AKA repeating. And these are pretty cool if you add a collection to your site. So if you have thousands of products, you can auto fill these by connecting them to a collection. However, for this design, we only have three images we're going to put here. So we're just going to drag ours in manually, but these are definitely worth checking out if you have a lot of products that you want to display on your site. Another good thing about this is that it's automatically responsive because it's taking advantage of Flexbox. So as we scale this in, it's going to automatically change to a vertical layout. So that's really nice for us because it's going to speed up our workflow. So the first thing I'm going to do is select the text field and just delete it. And it's automatically going to adjust all three to delete. Then I'm going to grab my text and edit this. And we're going to set this to a heading three. And this is going to be pop and semi bold. And we're going to drop this down to a 22 size font. And that's going to stay the same on all versions of the website. And we'll set the color to white and update our theme. I'm going to select the section and change the background color to 1C, 1C, 1C. And our heading, let's also convert that to our H2. And paste in our text. We can also go ahead and delete our button since we only have three items. And I'll just change the text for these. And finally, select each of our images and change them. to our respective product photos. And for our last section, let's actually just go ahead and use a wireframe that they provide for us. So we can go to sections, wireframe, and we have a nice image with a title and a button here, just like in our design. So we'll go ahead and click to add that. Selecting that image, I'm just gonna change it to my product photo, just like so. We'll paste in a bit of text here. I'm actually just going to delete this button and drag in a new one. And we'll just update that button text and its design style, changing that fill to our blue color. And for our text, let's actually bump this down to an H1. And I'm going to make sure this is set to 36 and 60. And we'll convert that to a black colored font. And just drag our button below it and select both and convert them to a stack. With that stack selected, let's go ahead and center that into the section and make sure our docking is set to the top and the left and the right. Lastly, we need to grab that section and drop it down. So we'll go section, move down to make sure everything is in the correct order. So we have our hero. And we've got our second section, currently shipping, and then our call to action and our footer. So before we take a look at making this responsive, let's go ahead and finish off our navigation. So we need to select manage menu and we need to actually set up the anchors for all of these. So to do so, we need to actually have anchors. So I'm just gonna click on this container and that's gonna be our first anchor. So it's gonna scroll down to this container on the page. So with that selected, here in the inspector, we can go all the way down to the bottom and select the anchor and turn that on and give it a name. Then for our next anchor, we'll select this currently shipping section and give it a name. And finally, for our call to action, we'll make sure we have the section selected, add a container, and I'm just gonna call it call to action. So if we scroll back up to the top and we go back to manage menu, now we can change the link and we can actually select each anchor. So first we want to go to vintage wine, done on that one. 
on the next one, we want to go to currently shipping. And on the final one, we want to go to the call to action. So that's done. If we preview, whenever we select one of these, it's going to automatically scroll to that section. So now it's time to make those adjustments to make this design responsive. And since Editor X uses CSS Grid and Flexbox technology, it's already done a lot of the heavy lifting for us. We just need to make simple adjustments to make this pixel perfect on every device that it's viewed on. And so I'm gonna select this handle here on the left and begin to drag in. And if you look here in the top center of our screen, we have these three breakpoints. We have the desktop, the tablet, and the phone. So the way this works is CSS cascades down. So any changes we make here on the desktop version are gonna pass down to the tablet and the phone. However, if we make any adjustments here on the phone view, it's only for the phone view. So if I were to change this button to red, it's only gonna be red on the phone view. The tablet and the desktop will stay exactly the same. So what we're gonna do is just drag this in and make sure that on the smallest of our desktops, which is about right here, everything looks good. And then we're going to drag it a little bit further to go into the tablet range. And you can see the range of the tablet with these gray sections here on the side. Right here on this very edge is the widest the tablet can be. And then if we drag in, right there is the smallest it can be before it converts to the phone. And then we're in the phone range. So while we're here in the tablet range, we need to make sure it looks good even at the smallest and the largest of this range to make sure that our website looks good on every device. So we'll make our changes here and then move on down to our phone. I wanna make sure everything looks good right up to the point where it goes tablet, which is right here. So everything looks good so far. If I keep scrolling, I wanna make sure that each of these are docking properly. So I have this stack set to top left and right, so it's centered in there. Same thing on this next one, should be good. Everything's looking good so far. So let's go ahead and move down to the tablet. So if I drag this a little bit further, you can see we're in the tablet now. Now these gray areas on the sides, that's the different sizes of tablet. So this is the tablet range all the way up to right there, which is the breakpoint for mobile. So these are all the different tablets that this is gonna be viewed on. So we wanna make sure it looks good on all of them. So I'm gonna scroll down to the smallest tablet cause that's kind of where this breaks. And I'm gonna scroll down and look and see if anything else is breaking. This section looks okay still. And this section, we lost our image, but I planned ahead for that. I knew this would automatically just go to white. So that's how I wanted it. So everything's still looking fairly good. So now we're gonna get into the adjustments. The first thing I wanna do is in the navigation, I'm gonna select our menu, click on the three dots and don't display. We're on tablet, we can easily just swipe through this. I don't wanna have all those because they're not actual links to another page. And we have our call to action button right here as well. Also, I'm gonna select this text and center it inside of this group and make sure the docking is on the top left and right to keep it there. Then we can select the section itself and actually just adjust the grid. So if we click edit grid, we can drag this line over and it makes the product smaller, but it actually gives us a lot more room for our text, which looks good. So I think that's all the adjustments I wanna make for the tablet. Let's go ahead and drag this even further to the mobile views. So here in the mobile view, a lot's probably gonna break at the smallest size, so I'm just gonna go ahead and drag it down there since the changes we make are gonna be applied to the whole range. So this looks pretty bad, so we'll fix that. Uh, this section's completely broken, but that's an easy fix since we're using a grid. Here we're using that repeater, so everything just centered nicely and looks really good. And lastly, the section's just a little bit off, so we'll make a small adjustment there. All right, so from the start, what I wanna do is select this section and adjust our grid. And we can just swap this to a vertical layout, just like so. And I'm actually gonna select this image and click the three dots and don't display. Then let's drag in a new image and change it to the exact same image. And then we'll scale it up to a good size. And then I'm just going to send it all the way to the back. So arrange, send it back. And I'm just going to align this centered and towards the bottom of this 100 viewport height section, just so we have that in the background. Let's make sure it's docking on the left and the right and see what happens when we drag in our handles. That looks pretty good. All right, so now with this center paragraph, let's go ahead and edit the text 
center align it, and then we can drag our button to the center of the screen. And I'm also going to expand the stack itself. So I'm going to click here in the space to grab the stack and just drag the width a little bit wider. And then we'll center that to this section like so. So now when we go in, that looks really good. All right, so that takes care of that section. This section is a really easy fix. We can just go into the section itself, adjust the grid, and change it from a two by two to a vertical one by four. And you can see that we have all of our cells stacking on top of each other. I'm gonna select each one of these stacks and make sure they're inside of their own cell. So it's getting a little confused here. So the actual cell itself ends right here. So we need to make sure that's inside of that. So let's actually just go into the section, adjust the grid, edit grid, and we'll drag each one of these rows down. And we'll scale these to 320 in size. I think we'll look pretty good. This one might need to be a little bit bigger just because it's got a paragraph. So I'm gonna drop it down to 480. And then the image can just take up the two cells like it's currently doing. So I think that will work for us. So let's center this paragraph inside of its cell. And then the stack, just change the position. We may, let's make it a little wider as well. Same thing with the paragraph. Let's actually make it the exact same width. So I'm using these pink guides to just make sure it's the same size. And let's go back into our section, adjust our grid, and just drop this down in size a little bit. 420 looks good. So now we got both of our cells here looking pretty good for this grid. Our image is still taking up two cells, which looks good. And finally, we need to adjust this section. So for this section, we're just going to grab the entire stack and increase its width like we did up top. And then in the inspector, we can make sure it's centered. And then I think we have everything adjusted the way we need. So let's just go up to the larger size and take a look at it. There we go. And so that's how to build a website using Editor X. Our site is now responsive. It looks great on all devices and it turned out perfectly looking just like our design. From here, you could go ahead and publish the design or you could add some motion by clicking on the animation and adding different animations to different parts of your website to make it look a little bit more polished and add some extra style. You could also add some things using the app marketplace. They have tons of things you can integrate with your website based on your website's needs. Finally, maybe try diving into dev mode to add some custom code and just get a little bit more deeper into your website. You can easily turn that on just by clicking turn on dev mode. And with that, that's gonna do it for this entire Editor X series. I hope you guys enjoyed building a website using Editor X. Thanks to Editor X for sponsoring the entire thing. And as always, have a great day, and I'll see you guys in the next one.